Thank you for being with us tonight. I'm Terry Brewer. And I'm Lynn Brooks. A horrific event. That's how investigators are describing the death of a Tuscaloosa woman inside her own home. As the case gets close to the one week mark, we've got some brand new and very descriptive information about a possible suspect in the homicide of Kate Ragsdale. WBUA reporter Travis Leader has more in our top story. He is alive near the scene of the crime in the Highlands neighborhood. Travis, describe to us more about what investigators are saying about the suspect. Well, we still don't have any names or physical descriptions, but we have a better idea of who the suspect was that committed this, quote, horrific crime. Now, 73-year-old Ragsdale was found dead inside her home in the Highlands neighborhood last Sunday. An autopsy revealed the cause of death as sharp force injury. Now, Tuscaloosa Metro Homicide Unit Captain Lloyd Baker says they have met with a retired FBI agent and former criminal prof uh, and a former criminal profiler. Now, based on the crime scene, initial analysis indicates the suspect is likely young in age and lived close in proximity to the Ragsdale residence. They also say it's likely the suspect will to and from the crime scene and was familiar with this location. Baker is asking to be weary of those displaying tremendous behavior changes in the days following this event, saying these behavior changes will be obvious to peers, friends, and family. They also believe this person is likely one who hasn't had a long criminal history. The criminals or the offenders' lack of sophistication in this crime indicates that this may be one of his first crimes. Now, if you know anything about this case, even something small, investigators want you to call them. You can make a confidential call to Crime Stoppers at 205-752-STOP. Reporting live from the Highlands in Tuscaloosa, Travis Leader, WVA News. Back to you guys. Thanks for that report, Travis. Members of U.S. Congress are in Tuscaloosa today helping to commemorate the 50th anniversary of George Wallace's stand in the schoolhouse door. Alabama native and Georgia Congressman John Lewis says this is his first time on the Alabama campus and he was moved to tears by the ceremony. Alabama President Dr. Judy Bonner led the ceremonies which featured the sister of Vivian Malone Jones, who was one of the first African American students enrolled at Alabama. Former Alabama Governor George Wallace's daughter was also there. She says her father's legacy is one of deep conflict and today we should move beyond the era of segregation. Today I rise to condemn the politics of exclusion that runs rampant in America. For America is at her best when she embraces all of us, protects the least of us, and offers her bounty of hope and prosperity to not just some of us. Also, Vice President Joe Biden will be in Selma Sunday to commemorate Bloody Sunday and the march over the Edmund Pettus Bridge. WVUA will be there and have that for you on WVUA News at 10 Sunday night. There is still no sign of a missing elderly man from Northport. 89-year-old Louvert Richardson has been missing since February 13th. Police say he was last seen by a relative at his home. Police say Richardson suffers from dementia and is on daily medication. He's described as a black male with a light complexion, 5 feet 11 inches tall, 170 pounds, brown eyes, and gray hair. Police tell WVUA they do not suspect foul play. Richardson's niece, Cherry Richardson, says the past two weeks have been tough. As long as nobody dead, but at least I would know where he is. Now, I don't know where he is, what shape he's in, what condition he's in, and believe me, you can easily find yourself sitting here. Now, authorities say if you find Richardson, do not approach him. You can call Northport Police instead. Here's the number, 205-339-6600. Now to Macon County, where the Alabama Supreme Court has weighed in on the latest battle over bingo, specifically Victoryland Casino. Earlier this month, Victoryland was raided by the Attorney General's office. They removed hundreds of gambling machines and cash. The state Supreme Court says there's a fair probability the machines in question are not bingo, instead are slot machines that are illegal under Alabama law. Alabama Attorney General Luther Strange says this decision should end the debate on whether so-called electronic bingo is illegal and local officials cannot create rules to make it legal. 
On your Money Watch, Washington is still battling over major spending cuts that would affect everyday Americans. $85 billion in widespread cuts kicked in today. Most of them will go into effect on a rolling basis over the next few weeks and months. Now, some of the ways you may notice the cuts include the grocery store, a cut to food safety programs with slow inspections, air travel could see longer security lines, national parks may close some areas. President Obama met with congressional leaders this morning, but there was no progress. The Speaker of the House and the Leader of the Senate and uh, all those folks have responsibilities. What I can do is I can make the best possible case for why we need to do the right thing. Uh, and I'm hopeful uh, that we won't have to deal uh, with the threat of a government shutdown uh, while uh, we're dealing with uh, the sequester at the same time. Uh, the House will act next week, and I hope the Senate uh, will follow suit. Thanks. Was there any move? Now, there is one bit of good news. The spending cuts should not delay tax refunds. The IRS says their furloughs will be delayed until summer after the tax filing season ends. Well, it is going to be a chilly morning for all those runners in Tuscaloosa's half marathon tomorrow. I hope they have maybe sweatpants or yeah. something that's a little bit warm. The run toward recovery starts at Government Plaza in downtown Tuscaloosa tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Runners will make their way through the path of the April 27th tornado. Traffic will be slow through those areas, so drivers will need to use extra caution. And if you aren't up for those 13 miles, the radiology clinic has a one mile fun run at 9 a.m. For information, go to WVUATV.com, click numbers and links. And if running a marathon isn't your style, prom season is just around the corner. And if you're looking for the right dress, good news tonight. The House of Prom sale is tomorrow. For $10, you can get a gently used prom dress and help a good cause. All proceeds from House of Prom go to Turning Point. That's a domestic violence sexual assault service agency for West Alabama. That's 9 a.m. Saturday, March 2nd at Midtown Village in Suite 206.